Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Um, before we begin, just remember we still got our 10% off on our website, switchup.gg, using code SWITCHUP. So if you're going to buy any of these games, you might as well save yourself a bit of money. Today we're going to continue with the new series that uh, Glenn came up with a few weeks back, where we look at six reasonably new and sometimes a little bit older games um, that have just really interested us and hopefully to share what we feel about them to you. Yeah, exactly right. So it's just... A series where we can talk about any games we want basically without the restrictions of having a genre heading or some sort of theme going through the video so yeah as mark said they could be new games they could be old we could have bought them on sale they're just six games free each that, that we want to talk about basically exactly yeah so hopefully it's one that you enjoy please do let us know down in the comments some interesting games that you've been playing as well and without further ado what are six interesting games we've been playing well let's find out I'll start then Mark. So the first game I've been playing recently is a game called Lego Builders Journey. Now I showed you to uh, this game the other the other night didn't I when we, we met up. Mm. It's a game that I'd had my eye on for quite a while but it's a, a digital only game. I think it came out on Apple Arcade first uh, but when it came to the Switch it didn't have a physical release so it always puts me off <laughs> and it's about 17, 18 pound which is, is way too much for me to spend on a, a digital game. But it, it dropped in sale, I think it went to 50%, which is still more than I've ever spent on a digital game, by the way. <laughs> but it was time, you know, time to pick it up. Mm. And uh, it's it's just a, a really interesting puzzle platformer, I guess you could call it. Certainly a puzzle game based around, obviously, Lego. But it's it was quite interesting. I read the blurb for it, and it, it says that it's uh, aimed towards w what's called AFOLs, which is a, an acronym for adult fans of Lego which I'm, I would certainly class myself as. But the, the premise is that you basically, you're moving your character, and it's not a Lego minifigure, it's like a, a person made out of Lego bricks. And it's almost like a father-son relationship you can see. And you, as the, the child, the son, have to try and reach your father, and obviously there are obstacles in the way you need, you need to circumnavigate that by building a cross and, and using the bricks at your disposal to, to get to the other side, basically. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, with the uh, AFOL community? It's it's a bit like the whole gaming thing. You you get a, a bit of stigmatism from some people because they see it as a, a child's pursuit, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it is becoming recognised more now, Lego I'm talking about, as something that adults can enjoy, but as someone that's nearly 40 and, and <laughs> has enjoyed it my whole life and, and well into adulthood and, and has, you know, a, a collection of it that I'm quite proud of, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, you certainly get people that, <laughs> that think it's a bit strange still to this day. You know, if you have someone come round to fix something in your house or fit something or deliver something and they see your collection, they're like, oh, you like Lego then, do you? You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this looks surprisingly complex. It's definitely aimed at adults, right? It's definitely, yeah, aimed towards adults. It's got beautiful aesthetic. Like, mm. in terms of recreating Lego bricks and structurally, you know, the way that they should work, no other game has, has done it as well as this one. And the basic premise, as I said, is you have to get to the, the goal of each level, but you can only move your character by laying down uh, the yellow bricks that you have. They almost work as like the track that your character will move along. So you have to keep those close to the character, and then you'll have other bricks at your disposal that you can build, say, bridges, or, or maybe you have to like rebuild something that's been broken. As there are stages where like water, waterfall will destroy a bridge and you have to repair it. So you can take that apart and use the pieces again to, to build as you go, but you have to keep these couple of yellow bricks close to your character so they can move along. Okay, so if you get stuck, what happens then? Well, if you get stuck, you, you obviously uh, you can take what you've built apart. And that's the one thing I will say about the game. Because of the perspective, it's obviously like a diorama view and it's a 3D rotatable diorama that you mm -hmm. that you can move and, and manipulate but it can be difficult at times to lay the bricks exactly where you want them to because of, because of that perspective it's one of those where it, it's a shame but it's understandable i don't really know how they could have helped with that anymore but it's such a relaxing game that it's never an issue you know yeah so you said you said to, uh, the other day when we were looking at it that you can build your own um you can build your own ones is that right it has a creator mode or creative mode, Okay. Um, which I'll be honest, I, I haven't tried because as a kid, obviously <laughs> Lego was all about, for me, was all about you know being creative and making your own models. As an adult, I buy the ones that I think look nice and I follow the instructions. So, you know, that creative side doesn't interest me as much anymore. And I do think 
I'm right in saying that the, the story mode, if you like, is quite short in this. So if you are buying it for value for money, then you would have to have an interest in that creative mode, I think, to get your money's worth. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just think it's a lovely, relaxing game. I was playing, you know, 10, 15 minutes a night, just a few little dioramas and then you move on. Uh, I actually stopped playing it because the Turtles game came out and I had to review that. Um, but I will return to this one because it was a lovely way to just end end the day, really, you know? Okay. All right. Well, my first one is probably about as, uh, what is it? Dialectic? Is that a word? Dialectically opposed? No, diametrically opposed. <laughs> is that right? Metrically opposed, yeah. yeah. Sounds wrong. I've created a few words in this series already. <laughs> There was one, what was that thing? I said something and something, this, about five people keep using it at me. <laughs> it was something to do with tentacles, I know that. Yes. But I can't think what it was. Yes, I turned tentacles into like, into like a verb. An adjective. Or an adjective yeah. or something, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Man. Well, well, let's just, uh, let's just keep creating. Well, my one is uh, about as, uh, as the opposite as you could possibly get to yours. Uh, and it's called The Suicide of Rachel Foster. Right, okay, yeah. And it's uh, it's from Daedalic Entertainment. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a walking simulator horror game mm. um, in the first person. We've seen it done quite often. But it was one where I wasn't sure what I was getting into. I mean, you saw the start of this. It's uh, set in a ski lodge, at, well, an abandoned family ski lodge that's been inherited by your character. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that obviously there's, by the title, there was a suicide there and there was some other bits going on with your father. But I wasn't sure if this was like a direct horror or if it was going to be just a full-on walking simulator. Um, did you play Firewatch? Uh, no, I haven't played it, but I, I know enough about it to know what you mean. Yeah, so I, it kind of, well, I th so I think, was going down the Firewatch route yeah. where you're never in any real danger. It's more about the, the atmosphere created. Mm. But there is something incredibly terrifying about being in this like fully open abandoned hotel. You can go anywhere, like it's massive. Mm. And I said to you, didn't I, last night about it? Just it feels like you're in The Shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I can get you know. I, I watched you play about half an hour of this, I think. So nothing really happened, mm. but I could certainly see from the uh, the setting what you'd mean there. You know. Yeah, and it, it kind of takes takes me on to what we always talk about in terms of the best horror games now everyone knows i'm terrified of horror games they scare me a lot but it seems to me that the best ones do the least to try and scare you the the yeah the best ones almost do the most but by doing the least you know like they, yes. they use um atmospheric sounds they use ambience they, they use what's not there but what might be there more than what's blatantly there in front of you <laughs> exactly yeah it's using what yeah so for example last night uh, i played for a couple of hours and i didn't know it was a scary game i didn't <laughs> i wasn't expecting it you know it didn't it didn't build itself up in that way and uh and and you're in the hotel you find out you can't leave because the weather's too bad and and you just start hearing a window banging in the distance yeah. And, you know, you don't know how to get there because it's a fully open hotel. You've got like an old rudimentary map, but it doesn't show your position. And just walking around this hotel, hearing this sound getting louder and louder. And you know it's a window. You know it's the wind blowing it. But it's still so eerie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just carries on like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, it, you go through each day. So I'm on like day four at the moment. Um, and, I, and as I'm understanding it, you're going to find out about this suicide and things like that. And it sounds like there's some really pretty grisly themes in this one, right? Uh, about abuse and stuff. Okay. Um, so is it? Yeah. Is it like, uh, from what you've seen so far, at least, is it like repressed memories from the protagonist as you're going along, or is it about them finding out about someone else? Or no, absolutely. What you've just said um, there. There's a lot of repressed memories coming up. There's a lot of things where. This character will go. Oh, I totally forgot that that was there. Yeah, yeah. And then you kind of, you, it uses the um, the mechanic, I guess, of having someone on the end of a phone that you're kind of bouncing off of, so it's not just just your all in your head. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that seems to work quite well. Uh, I'm too, you know, it's quite early, but that shining vibe and just the ambience of it is is really hooked me at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the shining. Um, I'll be honest, I've never read the book, so I'm I'm going solely off of uh, Kubrick's film but in terms of the atmosphere that that, that movie generated mm. um, from that isolated 
uh, setting was was fantastic. And go, to go off on a bit of a tangent, because uh, it's nothing about games, but the sequel to the film, again, I haven't read the book, but the sequel to the film, Doctor Sleep, is also well worth watching, by the way, just for anyone that's a fan of the Kubrick film. Yeah, check out Doctor Sleep if you haven't already. Nice one. All right, what's uh, the next one that you've got lined up? Right, my next one uh, is a game called Final Vendetta, which released, I think it was about, or it was the same week as The Turtles, so about two weeks ago, published by Numskull Games, and is a beat em up, very much um, paying homage to the classic arcade beat em ups of the 90s. Uh, most, you know, the, the one that's most prominent is uh, Final Fight for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your free characters, you have your, your big, you know, powerful but slow, your small but nimble and then you're all rounder that you can choose from and you go through your levels through you know through the streets it really does want to reference those those games you know like i say final fight in terms of the look the art style that the big pixel sprites it, it really does look like final fight but it does also have a bit of maybe something like um streets of rage in there which obviously wasn't an arcade game it was a console beat em up but in terms of the uh, the music, certainly it definitely borrows from from the Streets of Rage series, or is inspired by at least. Uh, and it actually has a band called uh, Utah Saints on the soundtrack. Do you remember Utah Saints? It rings a bell. What, what, what were they? What, what did they do? Well, they were like an electronic um, band uh, from early '90s. It would have been, I would say, very early '90s. The, the main song, the one that I can remember the most, was called Something Good, and it had uh, Kate Bush doing the vocals on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it, it started with them shouting Utah Saints over and over again. <laughs> Do you remember it? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I bet if you listen to it, just the first 10 seconds, you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that song. Oh, okay. but, um, yeah, but anyway, they're on the soundtrack, um, which was quite cool, which was a nice little nod. Uh, the game's set in England, it's set in London, but I mean, to be honest, all that really equates to from what I've seen is, you know, you'll see like panda car in the background every so often, um, <laughs> which is a colloquial term for a police car, by the way, if you're, if you're not English and <laughs> it's not a big panda sitting in it, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, it's a good game, it's a decent game. In terms of the mechanics, it's incredibly solid, actually, mm. you know, I'll give it its due, but it does... It, for me, it, it just lets itself down by having five lives and no continues. If you went to the arcade and you played the equivalent of five lives, let's mm. say you, you paid 50p a, a go, got one life and it's game over. So you'd put, you'd put £2.50 in and you'd play, you know, get to the end of stage two, lose on the boss, whatever. Oh, you know, £2.50's worth, I've had my money's worth, I'm, I'm fine now, go home, whatever. If you're paying £22.50 for a game and it's giving you five lives and that's it, I don't think that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why they do that. Like, either give you some continues or make it that your score decreases with every continue you use until it eventually reaches zero. So even if you finish the game, you're posting a score of zero. Do you know what I mean? Which is what, where the arcade competitive element would come into it anyway. But don't restrict someone that's paid 22 quid to five lives. Yeah. You know, and I know you can, I know you'll get the, you know, be better at it, get good. You know, that's fine. That's fine. That's, you know. But I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about getting good. I'm pretty decent at beat em ups. I did okay in the game. I'm not necessarily talking about me. I'm just saying that I don't understand that design choice. Yeah, I mean, could, or even introduce or have you know different options, different modes that you can do. You could do like classic arcade with a set amount and exactly. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an omission, really, isn't it? It just I don't understand it. And I, for me, I I think that really harms the game. And it came out the same week as Turtles. Turtles was dropped in that week which as you ex had exactly what you just said. It had story mode and arcade mode. And in story mode, if you lost all of your lives on a level, you'd have to start that level again, but you didn't lose all of your progress or you could play arcade mode, which was as it should be, X amount of lives. Still had continues by yeah. the way, but once they're gone, they're gone and that's game over. And that's I think that's how you make a modern day homage to an arcade game. I mean, there was um, I was watching Switch Corner's review of it yeah. And later in the game, he was saying there's quite a few like um, unfair deaths as well, like crates that just fall on the take One out the whole kills. of the screen. And yeah, exactly, exactly. I, it's it's a shame because in terms of the game, it's very good actually. I, I will, like I said, I'll give it its due. The way that it's designed, it definitely has uh, taken the best bits of some old school games. Yeah, it, like I say, I mean, to each their own. There'll be some people thinking that that's absolutely brilliant and it makes the game. 
fair enough, you know, but <laughs> I, I just for me, if you're making an arcade experience, arcade experiences weren't five lives and you're dead and that's it. They were play for as long as you want, but give us more money. And yeah, you've given exactly. them you've given them your money. Do you know what I mean? So that's mm. where it doesn't work for me. I think you should just take the continues out of your score or have two different game modes. But you know, whatever. It's still a decent game. <laughs> exactly. All right then. Um, well, the next one is a game that we've both played, and I think I think it's fair to say came as a bit of a surprise to both of us. Mm. And it's called uh, Record of Lodos War: Deed Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah, rolls off yep. the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a good, good title. That nice and uh, <laughs> snappy. <laughs> so it's um, a Metroidvania, essentially based entirely on um, Castlevania Symphony, Symphony of the Night. Okay, yep, I could see that. Um, it's uh, it's very, very good, isn't it? Yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised actually because um, its mechanics are nice and tight. Mm -hmm. It it kind of uh, rides that line between old school metroidvanias and what maybe some people expect from a metroidvania these days and it gets yes. gets it just about right it has a, like a foot in each camp i would say definitely so it's got all of the things that you've seen reused in modern games you've got your air quotes benches that you rest at to save you've got your teleportation but like Linda said there it's um everything's bought in it's all nice and concise you never feel like you've got to backtrack a huge amount you uh if you die you just go back to that save and the, the mapping system's really clear. You've got different types of weapons that you pick up. Leveling's really swift. Um, you can switch between like uh, uh, two different elemental abilities like fire and uh, I don't know what the other one is, but you can fly with it. I guess it's wind. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would, I would say so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and that comes into the puzzling and I'm sure as you progress, there'll be, there'll be other ones. But that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. But it's just... Um, it's quite refreshing, actually, after having come off the back of a big, difficult Metroidvania game run. I won't say what it is in case we get all kinds of uh, <laughs> comments there, but it's just everything's really swift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was. Um, it remind for me as a fan of say Super Metroid. You know, mm. that's the one for me that started it all off. It felt very. Um, Felt like playing something you've played before, even though you hadn't. It had that nice familiar feel to it. But as you mentioned, it it also updates a lot of its mechanics for a modern audience. Has a really nice pixel art style as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it just looks it looks lovely. It plays really well. I just wasn't really expecting it. I didn't know much about it, um, and it just it just works well. It has that same mechanic where you switch. You use that to negate damage. So there's like a I've just got to a fire fire area. So you switch to the fire thing jump in the lava, hop out, switch to the air one, hover over the platform. The, the levels are just really nicely and well designed. And yeah, I just, I guess it's just a bit of a surprise one for me. I, I don't know if you could call it a hidden gem. Maybe everyone already knows about this one. I think it's, um, the only reason I say this is because I, I remember putting it in an upcoming video way yeah. back when. So I did a bit of research then, but it was, my research was a while ago. So details might be a bit sketchy now, but it's based on a series of, of novels, I believe, like fantasy novels. Okay. Yeah, so the, there is a, an original source material for it. So obviously the fans of that source material will, will know all about it, I'm sure. Mm. But it, I do think it probably suffers from anyone that's not, uh, or has no knowledge of that, of the title probably putting some people off because it's incredibly long and, and uh, quite confusing. And I, I would imagine that maybe that's seen it lost in the uh, the abyss of the eShop to be honest yeah no it's and it keeps going on sale so i definitely recommend it here's a here's a clanger for you what's your favorite metroidvania of all time go i mean i'd have to say super metroid i think i'm not saying it's the best but it's certainly mm. my favorite just because it was the first one i ever played and it at the time i played it the age i was you know whatever i was 10 i guess something like that the feeling of being lost and being somewhere and, and having to find your way out and, and mapping it all down, that was mm. like my peak time for playing a Metroidvania and, and it making the impression on me that it wanted to make. You know, everything since you get that bit older and a bit more cynical and you don't have as much time <laughs> for that, that moment, for playing it at that time, I felt like I was on that alien world, you know? Yeah, quality. Absolute quality. How about right. you? Is it? Is oh, it well, you know, obvious? you know, it's, yeah. mine, mine's not as interesting because it's Hollow Knight by default, but, <laughs> I, and I actually feel like I need to play more, you know, I want to play more of the classics. 
Yeah, um, I've yeah. bought a few games recently to, for that reason. You know, I, I, this weekend I bought the Castlevania collection. Um, yeah, there are a lot of games that I want to play because I don't want to just be that guy that's only played the modern ones. You know. Well, I mean, Symphony of the Night you mentioned at the start. I mean, if you want to play a good one, give that a go for sure. That's a great, that's a great Metroidvania. Um, so what are we on? This is my last one, isn't it? Yeah, so my last one is, is definitely a, a blast from the past in terms of the Switch years at least. And that's ARMS, um, which came out back in 2017. I think it was uh, certainly within the first couple of months of the Switch's release. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a game that I'd, I bought like back then you know it's not like i've just recently picked it up i just never yeah. played it i played the um do you remember they did like the the online test sessions yes. that you could join i remember playing a couple of those and enjoying it actually really enjoying it but just i don't know bought it and then didn't play it you know it's like mm -hmm. um but i've picked it up recently and I, I have actually really been enjoying it now i remember you saying that you don't like this game do you um no <laughs> which is, i'll be honest is why i've brought it up um because i thought it'd be quite an interesting yeah it's, it's not you know? the thing is i think um i think it's a good game and i think there's yeah. it, it suffers really in my opinion from one of nintendo's biggest flaws which is their online infrastructure right because yeah. it's a very competitive game and you can be very skilled at it mm. but the lobbying and matchmaking it's too it's too watered down for, for right. something like this, you know. I mean, maybe they maybe they had, they added this in, but for me, like Rocket League, it needs to have a very good back end as far as the network goes. It needs to have um, tournament modes. It needs to have um, just matchmaking where you can where you can specifically get a group. I just it was too much. Like, I mean, the same can be said, I guess, for Mario Kart. That the whole back end can be a real flaw to to be able to have some in air quotes, serious yeah. competitive matches. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it put me off. I was like, this is quite fun. I can see the depth here, but I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fair enough. I mean, I don't play online much, so mm. that side wouldn't really bother me, but I do know what you mean having played um, Rocket League with you. Yeah. In, in terms of that game's uh, online system, yeah, it's, it's, it's night and day above most things, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah. But um, in terms of the single player, or just just the, the basic gameplay uh, of Arms, I'm talking about now, um, I just found it really quite intriguing because mm. Nintendo are, you know, I mean, they, they are a funny company in a lot of ways. <laughs> but the way that they came up with this game, from what I read at least, um, is that they basically they wanted to make a fighting game, but they wanted to make a, a, a 3D behind the camera or behind the shoulder, beg your pardon, perspective fighting game. So it wasn't that they came up with the arms idea first. The first, their first thought was, I wonder if that would work. I wonder if that camera view would work in a fighting game. Yeah. And from there, they had the idea of, well, I'm here. My opponent is way back there. What do we do next? And their idea was extendable arms because that is a way of covering distance quickly. Yeah, I just, I found that quite fascinating that, that that's the way they came up with the game idea. It wasn't that they had that core mechanic in mind of the arms. It was... A fighting game from this perspective would be quite interesting but how can we make that work and then they introduced that mechanic you know yeah it is a really interesting idea um that is very nintendo though isn't it it's almost like they say very it's not uh we we didn't think about you know we thought about whether we could we didn't think about whether we should <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i just I, I mean it's had a lot of work done to it since it released when obviously i'm playing it now and all that's packaged in you know it's i think it's five more characters uh, since launch and various other bits and bobs. But in terms of what you get now, and this is quite, again, quite a, a relevant point, I think, because Nintendo do this in a lot of their games. You've had the recent football game, haven't you? The Strikers game that a lot of people are saying there's not enough content with Nintendo promising more to mm. come. But if you're buying it day one, you're obviously, you, you know, you're paying your money now and you're not getting the full, the full story. But when you buy the game and it's had all its updates and it, here it is, the finished article, actually, you know, in terms of arms, it's, it's quite a decent game that you're getting for your money it, even things like the way that you get the different arms you know that the arms that you can attach and they're, they're all slightly different they have different powers different elemental powers say but you go into this uh almost like a shooting gallery and you have to punch the targets with your with your arms yeah and then you'll be rewarded with new ones that you can then attach i just thought that was quite clever you know it just keeps the game fresh yeah no it is it's a good game it's a fun game i just i'm not sure they i'm not sure they packaged it right 
No, I don't think they did. I don't think they did. And I think that's Nintendo's biggest problem on anything that isn't, you know, a Zelda or a first party Mario game or they, they just don't. I don't know why they come up with this model of buy now, play later. You know, like I don't know where that's come from, but, you know, I, I don't agree with it personally. I know some people look at it and say it's free content. You're getting more for your money, but they could just whack it all in the game from the start and be done with it, you know, just sell it as is. And as a physical collector, I know that means that when I buy the game, it's two, three, four, five gigabytes worth of downloads to come with it, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think it's a very popular ethos, particularly at the moment. All right, well, that takes me on to my last one then. And this is a bit of a uh, kind of flipping everything on its head because I'm talking about a game that was originally a 1982 Atari classic. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> So um, there was a game back in the day called Gravitar, obviously from Atari, um, that was based on asteroids and space duel. And they've remade it with uh, Gravitar Recharged, which quietly dropped maybe a month or so back. Is that right? Yeah, it was relatively recently anyway, yeah. Yeah, and we've, we've had a little go of it. And it's surprisingly enjoyable. Well, not surprisingly, it's very enjoyable. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, like, when you, you text me, you know, just talking about this and that and you mentioned Gravatar and I read your message and I, I, I remember saying to you like you mean Gravatar is in the Atari game Gravatar because that's <laughs> not the sort of game I'd expect you to be playing no. do you know what I mean but um, <laughs> yeah as you say it's a, a remake of it and it's a very good one because Gravatar is a game that I know quite well from the Atari 2600 I never played it in the arcades but um, such a hard game like I don't think I ever yeah. got anywhere anywhere at all in the original um, it's like one of those like um, you mentioned Asteroids that kind mm -hmm. of directional, you know, like you direct and then you thrust forward and it has that inertia and you then land on planets and you have to do something on the planet. And I was just constantly on the old one, just smashing into the rock, smashing into the surface of the planet, dying straight away. And they've done a very good job of, of modernizing that core gameplay element, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually quite easy to pick up and play. It's difficult to master. We obviously jumped in together and it kicks you out basically into like a solar system with all the planets rotating around the sun. And then, like Len said, you have to, both of you, navigate towards one of the planets, kind of hover near it, and then that starts that stage. And the stage have, each each stage has a different theme. So one of them might be to, uh, like, activate certain beacons. Another one could be to retrieve an object from the center of what's essentially, um, like, a very difficult uh, gravity-based puzzle. Um, and there are enemies on there as well. But the cool thing about it, and it's kind of Glenn alluded to it there, is that the gravity shifts based on the stage. So some stages, it might have a center of gravity and you're rotating around that. Another one might have um, just inertia rather than any physical uh, gravitational pull taking you in that direction. And by having it mixed up like that, you never quite know what you were going to get, did you, when you entered an area? No, so you might leave, you know, you'd enter the this new planet and you might leave your controls for a moment because you're expected mm -hmm. you're expecting yourself to be still and you'd plummet towards the surface or on other <laughs> levels it'll be the other way around and you'd you'd uh, overcompensate and smash into something so it does take some getting used to but um i i was i'll be honest i was very impressed how they took an older game that is is beloved but one that i didn't particularly enjoy as a kid because i just couldn't mm. do it and they've made it into a game that modern audiences would would enjoy you know Absolutely, and uh, it's one that you can pick up and play for a few minutes or have a bit of a longer session on. There's quite a few missions on there, and there's global leaderboards, which I always like, Glenn. And that's a good hook, isn't it? That's uh, that's that's the, the whole point of the arcade scene, wasn't it? Was to get your name yeah. on the arcade machine, so the modern day version to do that is, is your online leaderboards, and yeah, putting those in is a, an instant win, isn't it? I know that Atari have released um, a few of these these games on the Switch, uh, there's one for Missile Command, I think it's called Missile Command Recharged or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and they're very good actually, they, 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 all, they all do a good job of, of modernising the game, whichever game it is that they are obviously uh, repackaging. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're worth checking out if you, if, you know, if you like your classic arcade games. Absolutely, and they're generally quite cheap as well. I think this one's £7.99, um, you know, you hit any kind of sale on that and it's going to be basically peanuts. Um, so yeah, definitely worth checking out for sure. And for me that is the end as well that's it yeah that's our six games um i would say quite a you know a, an eclectic uh list of games there yeah. quite a few different genres and uh types of games 
like I say, or like we said at the beginning, you know, this series is just about us trying to express our love of games without it having to fit any sort of theme. And for me, it's quickly becoming my favourite new series because it's yeah. nice to just be able to play stuff. And <laughs> I hope that comes across in the videos and, and I hope you enjoy them. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing. And just to get the plug in at the end, the website still 10% off, still the code switch up. Hopefully that'll be forever because I tend to use it myself quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But um, as far as we know at the minute, it's until the end of June. So yeah, do, do yeah. get in there and uh, <laughs> get your Switch cards just in case it isn't forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a Play Asia link down there if you want your a physical uh, or physical games. You're into your physical games and you want to import anything, you get five percent off without one. Uh, use the link and then use the code, which is down there, and you'll save yourself a, a little bit of money. Awesome. All that's left to say is that for all things Switch, all the time. I want to thanks to our patrons. You guys are amazing. Um, keep it switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.